2034, the Democratic People's Republic of Australia. About a decade or so ago, the federal and state governments decided that Australians simply didn't have the capacity to look out for their own safety. In the government's eyes, it was clear that regular Aussies were no longer interested in protecting themselves or the people around them. So the government had to step in and introduce their Safety Before Freedom campaign. The campaign was a huge success. Purpose-built facilities were constructed to house those individuals who were unable or unwilling to obey the health directives. Not only did it get those people off the street, allowing other Aussies to live in relative safety, it also acted as a deterrent to make sure people did the right thing. A few years later, however, a number of new variants of concern were making their way into the community, and it turned out that the tried and tested health directives were simply not working. Vaccine boosters were becoming less and less effective, until finally the government made the brave decision under the Emergency Health Act of 2024 to mandate that all Australian residents were to be relocated to these new facilities. The program was aptly named the Australian Safety Residential Accommodation Program, or ASRAP for short. Most people realised that these facilities were there for their own protection and willingly complied. Those who didn't were sent to Unit 5, which we will discuss in detail later. Over the last 10 years, ASRAP has proven to be an incredible success. Australians have never been safer. In this presentation, we'll be walking you through the daily goings-on of a resident of the DPRA, Steve. Steve is 21 years old. He was removed from his family at the age of 15 in order to be relocated into ASRAP. He was assigned to District 7, Section A, Building 5, Floor G, Room 3. Consequently, he is more often referred to by his calling code 7A5G3, which in accordance with Section 305B of the Emergency Health Act 2024, has been printed onto the side of his neck. Steve's room is fairly comfortable with all the modern conveniences. He has a bed, a shower, a toilet, a treadmill, and a monitor which he can use to listen to important government updates, as well as for his leisure time. As per the Emergency Health Act, he is not allowed to leave his room for any reason, and simply cannot leave his room as it is permanently locked. He has not seen another person face to face for the entire period of his stay, so close on six years now, but this is true for all residents of the Democratic People's Republic. However, he hasn't lost hope. If all things go to plan, the government will be allowing residents to return to normal life, possibly in the next few years or so, after things have settled down with the virus and the various mutant strains. Steve does miss his family, but luckily he is allowed to communicate with them once a week via his monitor for up to one hour at a time. However, he can only contact one of his family members per week, as they are all in their own separate rooms. He knows that calls are strictly monitored and certain topics are off limits. Failure to abide by these rules will result in confiscation of his privileges. Due to Steve's predisposition to heart disease, he's been placed on a strict diet of lettuce and lentil soup three times a day in accordance with his government health plan. This diet has been in effect for the last seven months, but he knows if he continues doing everything as requested, more privileges will be open up to him. Food is delivered through a hatch in the door by a hallway attendant, a much sought after role, in a hermetically sealed container but Steve must stand a minimum of four metres away from the hatch when it is being delivered, and cannot communicate with the hallway attendant for any reason, and vice versa. The risk of transmission is too great if individuals speak to one another, so the government had no option but to outlaw face-to-face -face contact altogether. Every day, Steve must run for 90 minutes on his treadmill in accordance with his government health plan. He currently has three hours of leisure time per day, which he can use to play his favourite games or watch his favourite movies. He used to have four hours, but a few months ago he didn't finish all his lettuce, and he was penalised one hour leisure time per day. He now knows that he must complete all activities and finish all food that the government give to him, with failure to do so resulting in strict penalties. 
However, he knows it's for his own good. The government are simply trying to keep him, his family, and the other residents of the Democratic Republic safe from the negative effects of heart disease, obesity, and of course, the virus. Due to his recent success of going 100 days without a single breach, the government have allowed Steve to have a special meal every Friday night. Instead of lettuce and lentil soup, he's now allowed to have lettuce and chickpea soup every Friday night. It's a nice change to his week, and it has really improved his mental health. He looks forward to sitting down on Friday night with his hot bowl of chickpea soup and watching reruns of Home and Away from 1989. Occasionally, on the daily government news, he sees residents who have participated in major breaches of the rules, such as hunger strikes or self-harm. Those individuals are sent to the notorious Unit 5. People in Unit 5 are shackled for up to one week at a time and are fed intravenously. They are made to watch government training videos on how to become a good citizen up to 18 hours every day. Once the week is up, most individuals realise the error of their ways and how lucky they really are that the government are looking out for their safety by keeping them confined to their own separate quarters, by allowing them to eat healthy food three times a day, and by keeping them fit and healthy with the aid of personalised government health plans. Lentil soup, lettuce leaves, home and away from 1989, what else could one ask for? And ASRAP has really worked. Over the last 10 years, according to government data, heart disease has fallen by a massive 93%. Traffic accidents are non-existent as nobody is allowed to drive anymore, or leave their rooms for that matter. Cancer rates are down by a massive 97% due to the abolition of alcohol, smoking, and all other harmful substances. But most importantly, only 13,953 people died in Australia last week from the latest mutant strain. So it is important that you stay indoors, eat your lentils, continue exercising as per your government health plan, and stay safe. Thank you for your continued cooperation in this matter. If you continue obeying the health directives, we should be able to return to a more normal way of life by about 2037. Have a nice day. If you want total security, go to prison. There you're fed, clothed, given medical care, and so on. The only thing lacking is freedom. <laughs> <laughs>